Hey guys, Brooksy Tech here, and today I wanted to do a quick video on the MSI X570A Pro motherboard for AMD Ryzen uh, chips. Uh, this is specifically for the Ryzen 3000 and I think the upcoming Ryzen 4000. Uh, according to the box here, um, it says it will support 2000 and 3000 series chips, but with future BIOS updates that will be uh, remain to be seen. But first, let's take a look at the box here. So here's the top. Um, you have the MSI AMD Motherboard X570 Pro. Uh, it's part of their Pro Series and Gen 4 um, up there. And so down here, we just kind of have the X570 uh, socket AM4, uh, Ryzen 3000 desktop ready. And then it says AMD Ryzen Series 2000 and 3000 Series compatible. Again, I would verify that the BIOS that you're running um, is compatible with those if you're running something older like a 2600 or 1600, uh, etc. And then let's take a look at the sides. So again, just the X570 um, AMD Ryzen, X570 Pro, Pro Series. On the side here, we just have the serial number. And then um, it says things like second and third gen Ryzen, Ryzen with uh, Radeon Vega graphics, second gen Ryzen with Radeon graphics. Um, and then saying it will not support the A-Series or the Athlon X4 Series or the Athlon with Radon uh, Vega graphics. So just remember that. Um, kind of just on this side, we just have a few warnings. Uh, nothing super important. And then let's see on the last side here. Again, just kind of similar to the other side, just but a different horizontal versus vertical, just the X570A Pro. And then the uh, compatibility. And then take a look at the back here. Um, it has the Lightning 4 Gen solution, the latest uh, Gen 4 slots provided with next level, uh, provide the next level of performance 2x band with 64 gigabits per second or gigabytes, I guess, I'm not sure. They're optimized for multi GPU, better GPU signals, two way crossfire support, and enjoy crystals found with audio boost. And then here's kind of just a picture of the motherboard um, talking about the DDR4 speeds. Um, 1.6x performance, 100% uh, compatibility, um, up to 4400 uh, megahertz. And then we have just the core boost, latest evolution of high quality components. And then the uh, Frozer heat sink to, uh, design patented cool down with the exclusive fan and design propeller technology, zero uh, Frozer technology and double ball bearing. I have been running this motherboard for a while and the fan does turn on and off depending on what you're doing in the heat inside the case. So it is nice to have that. And then just going over some of the uh, specs is the CPU support socket, graphics interface, um, four dim slots, uh, display HDMI, graphics out, three PCI 1X slots, uh, a Lightning M.2 and a tur Turbo M.2. So it looks like um, the speeds are, one's a Gen 4 and then one's a Gen 3. Um, so you might wanna take that in consideration uh, when purchasing M.2 slots and um, where to install them. And then we just have the LAN port, uh, USB 2X, uh, USB Gen 3, Type A plus C, and then 8X uh, Gen 3.2, Gen 1s, and then 6X USB 2.0. So a lot of those are probably the onboard ones and not the rear I.O. And then just kind of a picture of the rear I.O., but I'll uh, go ahead and send a, show you a picture on the actual board. So let's go ahead and set this down and take a look at the board itself. Um, so pretty big board. It's, I think it's about 10 inches or so uh, wide and then uh, about 12 inches tall or so. I don't have the exact measurements, but you know, big board, it's a full, full ATX. And then we'll start at the top and then kind of uh, go down. So let's get it. So up top, you're gonna have your eight pin plus four pin. Um, you don't really need to use the extra four pin, but it is handy if you're gonna overclock or something like that. Um, and then do, we do have some pretty beefy VRM heat sinks. Um, so that is nice. I've heard that this may not be the best overclocking board, but you know, again, for the price, it's a really good board, especially if you can like get, get it on sale from Amazon or something. And then going down the side here, um, here's kind of the um, dedicated audio uh, components. That's always nice. And then we're going to have our uh, M.2 slot. I believe this is the uh, Gen 4 PCI Express. So the, the high speed slot there. And then we have our 16X slot here. 
and then there's no six or one X slot here if you're using like a double uh, bracket, like a, a two two PCI slot height card, and then we have a one X, another sixteen X. Um, you know, if you can want to do crossfire or run something like a like a high end like network card or another uh, like a raid card or something, and then two more one X slots, and then going down the uh, bottom here we have. Um, our front panel audio, um, JRG, uh, RGB one. Um, this is, I believe, if you need to connect a serial port, kind of outdated, but some people um, do have a need for it, I guess. And then kind of a one uh, weird disadvantage of this board is all four of our system fans are down here at the bottom. So if you're gonna be running all, you know, several fans, you might need to look into getting some extensions. Uh, you can get them pretty cheap on eBay for three or four bucks or, you know, depending on the quality of them. And then we have, um, this looks like maybe some kind of um, uh, interface port. I'm not really sure what these do, but then we have our two USB uh, 2.0 headers. If your case has USB 2.0 or you need some uh, for the back of the case, or I know like some Bluetooth PCI cards also use those. Um, and then we have our two USB 3.0s um, this is going to be our front panel header. This is an addressable RGB. Um, and then I think this is for a speaker. And then again, here is our, uh, you know, chipset fan. The X570 does get a little toasty, so keep that in mind. So and then going up from the you know, USB 3.0, uh, we have our six SATA slots. And again, nice thing about the X570 is that along, as, as long as you use, I think, a Ryzen 3rd gen, maybe even 2nd gen, you get to use both M.2 slots, all the PCI slots, and the 6.6 uh, SATA at the same time, so you're not going to um, be limited to the number of ports. Um, then we have our 24-pin ATX, um, and then our four RAM slots, and then this is listed as pump one. If you're going to be running like a all-in-one cooler, um, one of those like all-in-one water coolers, and then we have our CPU fan and then the two more addressable RGB and regular RGB, so the five volt and the 12 volt. And then smack dab here in the middle is our uh, CPU um, socket there, and I have my 3600 in there. And then um, nothing too much major going on with the board, but you know, plenty of features for the price. And then let's take a look at the back here real quick. Um, so we have our, you know, um, up here is the BIOS flashback. So nice thing is you can actually update the BIOS without uh, a CPU. So it might be useful um, when the 4000 series chips come out. Um, you could definitely upgrade there. And then we have our uh, PS2 combo port, two USB 2.0s. Um, you know, those are good for like peripherals. Um, USB uh, 3.0. And then I think those are the Gen 1 and then our HDMI. And then we have our USB-C and USB uh, 3.0, uh, Gen 2, I believe, and then two more um, Gen 1 ports with our gigabit LAN port. And then we're gonna have our rear uh, audio with um, optical out, and then which is nice if you wanna hook it up to like a, a surround sound. But yeah, so I've been running this board um, and I'm actually redoing my build with the new case and some components. But um, for the price, I think it's really good. I got this for less than a hundred bucks. I know that's not the going rate, but if you're, uh, patient, you can snag this, you know, be used on eBay or Amazon for a pretty good deal. I definitely would recommend it, um, especially if you're getting ready for Ryzen um, 4000. But again, you know, I'm running 32 gigs of RAM on it at 3200 megahertz, no problem. But yeah, I hope you guys found this video useful. Make sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe for more content. Thanks. Bye.